they also exist in USA and UK as a lot of Indian diaspora lives in all these countries. So uh, from that point of view, the Indian television industry is highly popular amongst the diverse kind of audiences. And uh, since last few years, we are seeing high growth in the uh, business of Indian television sector, specifically in the, it, uh, in the entertainment section. So uh, in India, even after the uh, inception of digital media, nowadays digital media is emerging as a, uh, is a is another competitive kind of a media, media for television industry. But even after the inception of digital media and growth of digital media in India, television is still a very popular media for news and general entertainment. And if you can see a uh, history of uh, Indian television sector, so before privatization of media, Doordarshan was the only channel for uh, news and general entertainment program. Doordarshan is a, you can say, organization which is a part of government and that is a public broadcasting service of India. So before a privatization of television in India during 1995-2000, Doordarshan was the only, uh, you can say, uh, uh, channel for news as well as the uh, uh, entertainment program. But after privatization, television is in high demand. And after you can say 2005, if you can see a digital media is emerging is a very popular media in India in all settings and um, in all age groups. So that demand or the uses of digital media is highly increasing, specifically uh, through mobile internet. But still, television is highly popular amongst the audiences of all age group and uh, you can say uh, audiences who comes from different settings, including urban as well as the rural audiences. So television is uh, considered as a very credible media for uh, news uh, and for uh, general entertainment. Uh, television in India has the potential to reach to the audiences in more creative ways uh, as it is highly acceptable and adopted media. But we are seeing that, uh, specifically when we talk about the entertainment segment, we are seeing that uh, the producers of uh, television programs, they are not taking this risk of experimenting with the uh, genres in which they are making programs for the entertainment purpose, as well as the stories on which they are making their television program. Uh, and also, they are not uh, taking risk of experimenting with the audiences. So they have a set formula and normally they produce programs on that particular set formula because they have a fear if they will change their storyline, if they will change their genre, if they will create something new for the different age group or different audiences, probably they will lose their advertisers and sponsors because in private, uh, you can say uh, television, a uh, government is not providing any money money so their money source is advertisers and sponsors so because of these particular reasons they are not uh, they are not taking risk of uh, uh, of experimenting not only with the genre story as well as the audiences base which they have created in last few years the program formats are mostly the program formats are mostly romance, drama, uh, supernatural fiction, daily soaps, reality shows, dance, competition so shows, music program, Indian mythology based programs, some religious content. So this, these are the, uh, you can say, uh, uh, subjects on which normally they make program uh, for entertainment purpose. And uh, and this is a uh, this is accepted as a set formula by most of the television channels and most of the television producers. Uh, in last few years, we are seeing another change in the audience's behavior or their content consumption practices. That uh, most of the audiences they prefer watching uh, entertainment content in their regional language. So there are uh, television channels which are providing content in regional languages such as uh, Marathi, Tamil, Bengali and other regional languages. So India is a very diverse kind of a country specifically when it comes to language and the culture. So uh, and there are audiences in all these different pockets in all these different settings. So uh, television channels they have started their channels in the regional languages and they are getting good number of audiences when they are pro uh, making programs producing programs in regional languages also but if even if we can see the uh, the genre the stories and the uh, and the you can say the treatment which they gives to their stories or the programs so that is remaining same even in the regional language so when we talk about uh, television programs specifically for entertainment pro uh, entertainment purpose 
in hindi language as well as in the some other regional languages such as marathi bengali tamil telugu and bhojpuri so the content story and the genre remain same they are not experimenting with the uh, genre they are not experimenting with the story uh, but what they are doing they are making programs on the same pattern on the same stories on the same genres and they also want to play with the same number of audiences or same type of audiences and because of this uh, we are seeing lot of you can say stability when it comes to creativity or when it comes to new stories or when it comes to providing new content for the entertainment purpose to the audiences so uh, indian television channels are not only watched in india but they have a high demand in foreign countries indian diaspora uh, living in foreign countries they watch channels of general entertainment in hindi as well as in their regional languages uh they have indian television uh, sector they have uh, audiences in afghanistan pakistan bangladesh nepal and some other south east asian countries so if you can say the audience base which exists for indian television uh, channels so it exists in the south indian continent west asia middle east usa and uk because lot of indian people they have migrated to these countries and uh, they are they, they migrated there for job purposes and they normally watch uh, uh, television programs in their own native language and apart from that uh, indian television sector or channels they have a uh, you can say audience uh, foreign audiences also such as afghanistan in afghanistan so people they understand hindi language over there and they prefer to watch Uh, serials and other reality shows which comes on entertainment channels so they prefer to watch these programs instead of watching uh, uh, you can say uh, 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 programs uh, which are available on uh, other you can say western or foreign channels foreign uh, foreign television channels so they prefer to watch indian television channels because they feel connected or or, or probably uh, they like the way uh, uh, a story stories are narrated uh, in these programs or uh, in on these channels through these programs so the creative emptiness is giving an opportunity to the ott platforms and online streaming because if you can see uh, a lot of you can say television audiences they are shifting towards the digital media also because nowadays mobile internet is av easily available uh, in india in all the settings urban as well as the rural so uh, the internet cost is also very low and all these you can see smartphones they are available in low price so people they have access to the internet they can buy the smartphone and through that they normally watch all this entertainment related programs or the entertainment content which is available in the form of tv serials ott shows ott uh, uh, ott platform shows and movies a lot of you can say songs so different kind of content they normally watch and um, out of this different uh, content they also watch uh television series because normally television channels they uh they they distribute their content to the ott platforms or the online streaming platforms also so the uh, the tv series the serials which are produced for television they are also available on digital media and apart from that uh netflix and uh, amazon prime video uh and other you can say ott and online streaming services or platforms are also available in india which are getting high popularity amongst the indian audiences so they also creating or developing a high audience base in india because uh, uh, most of the people living in urban rural uh, belonging to different age group nowadays they consume lot of entertainment related content through digital media and all these ott and online streaming platforms so uh, uh, when we talk about the uh, lack of creativity in the uh, production of uh, uh, television serials specifically for the entertainment uh, entertainment purpose so this particular stagnation is giving giving an opportunity to the ott platform producers because they know that uh, a specific kind of uh, content is not uh is not developed is not produced by the television producers or the television channel because uh though uh 
there are there is a high number of audiences but still the audiences who watch television they are very traditional in nature so whenever they are watching a television program even for entertainment purpose so they are watching with the family so normally when uh, television producers are making programs for television so they 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 keep this particular concept in mind ki when we are producing a program so the audiences they will be a family audiences they belongs to the family so that is why they no this is also a reason that is why they are not uh, uh, trying to experiment with the content because probably if they are uh, showing a different kind of a content they probably they will lose their audiences because normally uh, audiences who watch television and entertainment content on television they watch it with the family and that is why uh, they call it that this should be a family show or this should be a family drama which mostly people can watch with their family so uh, ott platform knows that what are the limitations of television uh, channels and that is why normally when they uh, produce a web series or a or a show for ott platforms or online streaming platforms so they normally choose those subjects which are not shown by the television channels so there is a uh, there is a you can say lot of difference when it comes to the genre and the the story of the uh, of the shows which ott platforms or the streaming platforms are uh, are producing and which the television channels are producing so there is a lot of difference between the genre and the story on which television channels and the ott platforms are making program for the entertainment purpose so this is a basic you can say objective this is a primary objective of my study to see what is the change now what are the topics which are what are the genres taken by the television channels and what are the genre, genres which are taken by the ott platforms what kind of stories normally narrated by the television channels and what are the stories topics of the stories which are normally uh, narrated by the ott or online streaming platforms so this is a main objective of my study and um, for that uh, i can say now the research method of my study is qualitative content analysis and the two major categories i have taken for my study first one is the genre of the programs and the uh, second one is story of the programs for television and ott uh, or online streaming platforms so this study explores factors of genre and story of the television serials and shows or web series of ott and online streaming platforms this study is a explorative study to understand the reasons of stagnation in storytelling and creativity in general entertainment channels of indian television sector and how this programming weakness or the creativity weakness of television is benefiting to the ott and online streaming platforms of india uh, and for the study for the study i have taken two top television serials in hindi of two general entertainment channels of india the second uh, uh, section is two top television serials in marathi marathi is a regional language which is very common in maharashtra maharashtra is a one of, is one of the states of india so uh, the television serials are in which are in marathi and now uh, produced by two general entertainment channels of india and the third category is two most popular web series of two top ott and online streaming platforms of india so uh, for that uh, i have taken uh, two series so the first uh, the first one is hindi uh, television channel that is colors tv which is very popular amongst the audiences and the television show which i have taken or the television serial which i have taken that is nagin 6 the genre of this serial is supernatural fiction and the story is about uh, uh, it's a it's a snack nagin means snake snack so it it portrays the images of superheroes who will fight to save the country from the biological warfare and the main theme is covid 19 and other popular serials on color tv are udariyan and imli so the genre of these serials are romance drama action reality and music dance competition the second uh, hindi channel which i have taken for my study is sony entertainment channel and the serial which i have taken is mere sai shraddha and saburi and the genre is a uh, drama it is devotional and religious worship related content and it is based on uh, a religious a spiritual you can say um, 
leader uh, his name is sai and this particular serial tells uh, the story of uh, sai baba so he is a religious you can say uh, religious uh, or spiritual uh, person religious person so this is this particular uh, serial tells us the story of sai baba and the other popular serials which are available on sony entertainment channels are punya shlok ahilya bai holkar yashomati maiya ki india's laughter champion the kapil sharma show and crime patrol so the genre of these uh, serials are historical drama mythological comedy and crime and then i have taken two serials of marathi um, these two serials which are in marathi so for marathi again i have taken color colors marathi channel this is a channel and the and the serial which i have taken is raja rani ki uh, raja raja rani ji ka jodi so the genre of this particular serial is soap opera drama and other popular serials of color marathi uh, they are uh, sundara manavati bharli and jeev baza uh, gunthla so the uh, genre of these are dramas romance and drama romance okay so this is uh, this uh, raja rani ji ka jodi it's a story of a newly wed couple and it tells us a uh, uh, tells us a story of their struggle which they are facing in their married life the second channel which i have taken uh, from marathi language is sony marathi and the serial which i have taken is gatha namnatha ji it is based on mythology again it is uh, based on a, a spiritual uh, leader and it tells us uh, uh, his uh, you can say spiritual life the other uh, serial which i have taken from sony marathi is dhyaneshwar mauli again it is a devotional religious drama uh, Uh, Sw- uh, swaraj sodamini dara rani it is a historical drama and other serials uh, which are highly popular on sony marathi so their genre is uh, drama romance crime and comedy so we can see the similarity between the hindi and the marathi channels mostly they are showing us supernatural fiction then uh, uh, romance drama action reality music dance and then uh, historical drama mythology comedy crime again uh, if you can see the marathi we can see the same genre soap opera drama drama romance drama romance and then uh, uh, devotional uh, historical drama drama romance crime and uh, comedy uh, but if you can see uh, the ott platforms which are available so netflix is a highly popular ott platforms in india and if you can see uh, the 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 show which were highly popular on netflix in 2021 they have produced uh, three seasons till date so first one first one was released in 2019 second was second one was released in 2020 21 so the genre is spy, spy thriller and it is a story of um, of a of a person who who works in a uh, uh, in a in a defense uh, sale or civilian sale and he's he he uh, His, his his area of work is you can say defense and security so uh, he works for a national investigative agency of india and he is married and he has uh, two kids so it's a story of that particular person and it's a spy thriller it was highly popular in 2021 the other uh, show which is highly popular on uh, on, on netflix uh, in 2022 is ashram season so uh, the genre of this uh, particular show is crime drama mis it's about again a religious uh, leader it is a story of a religious leader and uh, what kind of mystery is uh, associated or kind of a scandal is associated with that spiritual leader so um, the another ott platform which i have taken for my study is amazon prime video which is it, this amazon prime video is also highly popular ott or online streaming platform in india so the web series which i have taken it is a mirza mirzapur so they uh, they have produced three seasons mirzapur mirzapur season 1 2 and 3 again this is a crime th- thriller action and it it tells a, tells us a story of a, of a, of a, of a very uh, uh, rich person who lives in a mirzapur mirzapur is a small uh, you can say town in uttar pradesh that is again a state of india and he is highly rich and he has a certain kind of a political association and he also uh, he, he has also a business of uh, uh, of uh, of uh, you can see certain kind of uh, uh, he he works as a mafia in that particular region he has a political influence and he is also a very rich person so this is a story of his family and the and the struggle or the conflict which which uh, uh, which uh, start in uh, start in his family 
so there is a if you can see the findings findings of my study we can see there is a difference in the genre of popular online streaming shows and television serials for entertainment in in hindi and marathi regional language uh, hindi marathi television series uh, uh, genre is almost same their story and treatment is almost same but if you can see the genre of ott and online streaming platforms so their genres are different their stories are different and treatment of uh, uh, treatment which is given to the story and uh, production part that is again very different so this is a, a slide which uh, which tells us tells us about the difference in colors hindi uh, sony entertainment uh, colors marathi sony marathi and the netflix and amazon so the, what is the difference in their genre and accordingly their story also uh, different uh, so what are the findings of my study uh, this is the finding that uh, this is the major reason why uh, we can see a, a very you can say uh, uh, significant uh, shift in the audience towards the uh, online and ott platforms because when they are watching digital media when they are watching shows on ott platforms and online streaming platforms they are getting a different content uh, they are getting uh, stories related to their day to day life Life. mostly these are the stories of uh, common people so what kind of struggles they face in their professional and personal life what kind of um, uh, characters exist in those families what are their difficulties and because of these economic or you can say uh, a social difficulties which they face in their life they normally get into a conflict and uh, uh, and which creates a tragedy in their life so uh, these stories are the stories of common people who lives in slums who lives in small towns um, and uh, who are not economically very uh, you can say rich they are very uh, uh, they are very they belongs to the uh, middle or lower middle class or they are they work mostly they works as a laborer they are migrants so these are the stories of uh, uh, which normally ott platforms and uh, online streaming platforms they capture and that is how they are uh, mostly they also uh, uh, some of the you can say shows they also tells us a story of uh, uh, of people who are from a uh, higher middle uh, higher uh, income background or they are rich but still there are certain kind of a uh, conflicts and when we talk about indian society so normally people think that uh, uh, indian societies are the families of indian societies they are very uh, uh, they are very uh, traditional in nature they normally follow certain kind of values they normally follow, follow certain kind of principles but because of all these changes which are, which we are seeing in last few years they they, they mostly the reasons are economic most of the reasons are social and because of that we are seeing a lot of change in the society also so uh, mostly uh, the the topics which are covered by ott platforms they capture the struggle of common people and in future i am planning to uh, to to you can say uh, to uh, to include some more parameters or categories in my study and i want to see if uh, mobile internet availability age urban and rural setting, uh, uh, settings economic background educational background cultural background that also makes certain kind of difference and that also decides why people are shifting towards the uh, towards the story which are show which are which are narrated by the ott and online streaming platforms and why uh, the television channels they are losing their audience base and definitely Definitely, in coming times, it will affect to the growth and development of Indian television sector. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, Swati. Uh, we now hand over to Catherine, um, and Catherine is looking at what's happened to local niche of streaming, the tours through the homegrown services of Denmark and Germany. So, um, moving away from um, Swati, I think you might have to stop um, sharing so that Helen can share. Great. Um, so, uh, uh, Catherine can share now. Helen, Catherine. Uh, uh, yes, Catherine will will look at the smaller scale um, uh, streaming services rather than the usual Netflix, Amazon Prime, Hulu, um, HBO Max, etc. Over to you. Um, thank you very much, Elsie, and uh, thank you, Swati, for the presentation. Um, I think uh, our talks fit very well together. So. Um, as Elke just said, um, I would like to give you um, a brief introduction to what's happening in local niches of streaming. Um, before I go on to do that, I wanted to introduce you to um, the research project 
where this research is coming from. Um, it is my own uh, little project uh, funded by a fund from Aarhus University. And um, the goal is to look at the development of Europe's video on demand markets within, let's say, the last 15 years. Um, and um, the approach is a media systemic one. Uh, so I want to look at factors <clears throat> that could be um, economical as well as political factors that have impacted the development of different European markets. Um, I'm taking several methodological approaches here. Um, as I said, overall, um, the approach is one of comparative analysis of media systems, and I'm doing that um, both quantitatively and qualitatively. So for um, the European Union as a whole, I've identified um, 28 different parameters in the media market that I'm evaluating and comparing across um, the different European countries. This is mostly based on data from the European Audiovisual Observatory, um, which also provides us a database of all the streaming services that are available in Europe. So those are my main two sources there. But um, obviously, <clears throat> the numbers can only give us a certain indication of what's going on. So I'm also interested in looking at specific cases um, of um, video on demand platforms that have emerged and died or video on demand platforms that are or have become successful challenges of Netflix, Amazon and the like. So um, the three countries you see here <clears throat> not in scale are Denmark, Germany and Estonia. And um, I've picked those because they have relatively different media systemic properties. So those are the ones where I take my case studies from. But the data analysis, which I'll give you a little bit of an insight into, is based on data from the entirety of the EU. So what are we going to do today? Um, I would like to offer some arguments why we have to look beyond Netflix, Amazon, Disney and Apple, uh, particularly when we talk about the European market. Um, I will show you some of the data that I have analyzed so far on um, key systemic differences in the European markets when it comes to the dominance of those global platforms. Um, I will give you an insight into um, my historical approach to the different phases of development in, um, in the European video on demand market, and then we'll move to two case studies. So that's the introduction to um, the niches, one could say, um, <clears throat> which are interesting because they show us different strategies and business models that have emerged within the European market that are quite different to what we see in, um, in Netflix and Amazon, for example. Um, and I'll finish with some research perspectives. So um, I have a lot of material to analyze because in total we have over 2000 video on demand offers in the European Union. But of course, not all of them are relevant or even known to people because, and this comes as no surprise, it is the global platforms, um, Netflix, Amazon, Disney and Apple that take the lion's share of the, at least the subscription video on demand market. So here you can see the averages for the EU. Um, clearly, Netflix is the winner. And then we have Amazon, Apple and Disney following. So if we look at those subscription video on demand platforms, we are able to catch a large share of the market. And it's undisputable that they have been influential drivers of, the, of video on demand cultures. They have accustomed us to subscription models. Um, they have taught um, other uh, players in the audiovisual industry the importance of exclusive content. And all of us have had much fun um, analyzing the different localization strategies of those global players. Um, so I'm not saying don't do research on them. But what I'm saying is that there is also a lot going on behind um, Netflix, um, uh, Amazon, Disney and Apple. Um, when we look at data from Europe, we see that they have very different patterns of dominance in the European markets. 
and those need explaining, which is one of the goals of my study. Um, what we also shouldn't forget is that the subscription model is only one of the business models that we have in the VOD universe. And when we look at Europe, then actually most of those over 2000 platforms that I've just talked about are actually free video on demand services, which means they're funded by advertising or by um, public money. And in many markets, those actually achieve significant reach, um, sometimes even surpassing the importance of Netflix. So looking at subscription numbers only just doesn't give us this detail. And when we look closer at some of their strategies, um, we see very specific ways of adapting to global trends that can only be explained if we look at the local contexts in which, from which these platforms emerged. So overall, my goal is to look at alternative stories or histories of streaming um, in the European market um, to, the, to see what's going on beyond the development of the global subscription video on demand services. So um, let's zoom in on some of the differences that I've been talking about. Um, this is um, an illustration that I based on data about the uh, subscription numbers of uh, two different um, VOD platforms in Europe. Uh, I have to caution you, these are estimates because that's all we have, be because you, you know very well that Netflix and the like don't release their subscription numbers um, publicly, so those numbers are estimates. But still, um, they give us an interesting insight into different levels of dominance of Netflix, Amazon, Disney and Apple. Um, we have markets that are where nearly all of the subscriptions are going to these global platforms. Interestingly, also the UK, which um, I don't have time to focus on, but um, that could be also something for the discussion. Um, and we have the um, Southeastern European countries that are quite dominated by the global platforms. In contrast to that, uh, we have a market like Denmark, uh, which is the white market here, um, where less than 50% of subscriptions actually go to these global platforms. Um, whereas the neighboring country, Germany, is again one that is very dominated by those global platforms. So looking at this map, what I'm interested in is what are the factors that can help us explain this quite um, this um, these different patterns. Um, and this is very much still work in progress, but I'll pre present you with a few hypotheses that I've developed for explaining this pattern that we see. Well, first of all, let's look at the map a little differently. I have combined the data on the subscription levels with data on the penetration of subscription video on demand in general, because that is one way of explaining it. Some of the markets um, that have a high dependence on Netflix, Amazon and Disney are actually also markets that have very low levels of subscription video on demand penetration. So for example, Portugal um, or Bulgaria. So that can serve as an explanation because they are not necessarily attractive markets for local services to emerge in. Um, Bulgaria, for example, is still very much dependent on um, advertising income from linear services. So um, here the development or the, le um, the level of development in the market can serve as an explanation, but that's not the case for all the other markets. So why are, for example, the Nordics less dependent on um, the global platforms. Um, as an example, I brought you Denmark, where we have two local or regional players that are quite strong if we look at subscription numbers, Viaplay and TV2 Play. Um, and when, when we compare this to the neighboring country, Germany, we see that 
the local players um, uh, RTL Now, which is now called RTL Plus, and Join or Join Plus are not achieving such high levels. So why is that? When we look at the Nordics, we see that um, they are the countries in which um, uh, Netflix has launched already in 2012. And if we see Netflix as a kind of catalyzer of video on demand use, kind of the platform that taught us what streaming is and why we should pay a subscription for it, then this can be one of the factors. However, we shouldn't forget that there was many, many um, platforms, that there were many, many platforms that came before Netflix. So TV2 Play, for example, it had a different name, but um, the platform of TV2 already launched in 2004. So we shouldn't forget that there has been other things going on. Um, one of the explanations that I'm working with is that the Nordic countries have relatively small television advertising markets. So um, this is why, in terms of business models, they gravitate more towards subscription because advertising just could not fund um, could not fund all the services. And this is clearly what we see with um, TV2 Play, which is um, a subscription service. So of course, that then features in the subscription numbers. Um, and it also requires a certain readiness of the population to go and take out subscriptions if they want local services. Um, and that's kind of what, for example, Danish users have been have been used to or have become used to. So that's why it's also easier to then have significant local platforms. Um, what is also interesting if we look at the Nordic market is uh, there um, is this phase of what happens after you've kind of reached everyone in the market, which we can say um, the um, video on demand platforms in general have done. We have um, such a high level of subscription that many people have several subscriptions. Um, and here we can look at some quite interesting trends for expansion by Wireplay as well as TV2 Play. Wireplay is expanding transnationally, for example, launching in the US recently, um, whereas TV2 Play is drilling deeper into the market which is um, an example I'm going to talk about in a minute. So these are some of the explanations for the high um, subscription penetration and the lower dependence on Netflix, Amazon, Disney and Apple in the Nordics. Um, but how can we explain the higher dependence in the nearly equally developed German market? Well, on the one hand, um, it is a bigger market, making it also more attractive for the global platforms because you have more subscribers. And this we find reflected in the investments of Amazon and Netflix in the local markets, which is not only true for Germany, but also for the other big European countries. Um, so they have more thorough localization initiatives with more originals and more priced content um, that is available on their platforms. Um, in addition to that, it is more difficult in the German market to establish the subscription model. Because in contrast to the small market Denmark, there is a significant advertising market. Um, and there has historically always been a low readiness to take up to take out subscriptions for pay TV. Um, and there is a lot of choice of free services, while Denmark only has one truly free public service um, video on demand platform, Germany has six. So um, here the prevalence of the subscription model might also serve as an explanation. Um, and lastly, the legacy players, particularly on the commercial side, are struggling with making their services commercially viable because they are still so dependent on the linear broadcast advertising income and this is no news to you. It is simply not the same to replace advertising income from linear 
with advertising income from on demand. And this kind of catches the German uh, private broadcasters in a in a double bind where they cannot abandon uh, their focus on linear because that's what earns them money. But at the same time, it stops them um, sufficiently developing their on-demand platforms. So these can be some of the explanations of this um, like stalling development of the local players, which gives space to the global ones. Um, I'm not going to go through this slide in detail, but what I wanted to point you to is exactly this idea that there has been a lot going on before the launch of the global platforms, which I classify as kind of the third phase of development in the European market. Um, <clears throat> we have the phases of early experiments, many of them are now defunct, uh, where it was predominantly um, a local uh, telecommunication companies that launched services. Then we have um, a phase that has also been covered by research, particularly through the perspective of public service broadcasters, um, where we have the public service channels emerging, as well as establishment of activities by commercial players and some lasting um, innovation activities. But um, what is probably more interesting to you now is what has been happening after the launch of Netflix, um, Amazon and the like in Europe. And um, I, here I think we can distinguish two phases. On the one hand, experimentation with um, niches, uh, for example, launching um, video on demand services that are not offering um, the same as Netflix and Amazon, but going into a niche like sport or youth content or anime. OK, Netflix is also is also offering that, but uh, services that are more targeted towards these niches, as well as experiments with the new business models, which I'm going to talk about in a minute. But we have since um, left this phase and are now in a phase that I would um, I would call the consolidation phase uh, where we have so many different services that they actually now have um, have been forced to work together to consolidate um, because otherwise the, uh, the local players are just cannibalizing themselves. Um, and they are under even more pressure because we are in the second wave of global services launching in Europe, Disney Plus being, being one of those. Um, so the two trends that I'd like to focus on is this partnering up of local services as well as new business models. Um, my case for the partnerships is um, a trend that I've been tracing on the Danish platform TV2 Play. And as I said, Denmark is a highly developed VOD market. So what is happening after everyone has taken out several video on demand subscriptions? Well, local players want people to take out even more subscriptions. So um, TV2 Play has uh, launched a strategy called TV2 for Everyone, where they plan to reach 1.3 million subscribers by 25. Um, at the moment, they have about half of that. And um, the strategy is to, uh, is kind of complicated by the fact that it is such a small market. So as the CEO of TV2 uh, says, um, we cannot produce ourselves to that position, meaning that we don't have the resources to make enough programs to um, to reach everyone. Um, it is still a small market. So what they need is new partnerships, partnerships that give them access to content so that they be can become interesting to more subscribers. So what they've been doing is launching partnerships with content suppliers, basically. Um, the first one, Heyu, which you may be familiar with, a service for uh, mostly reality television. Um, think of the Kardashians here. 
a children's service OI, which I'm going to talk about in more detail in a minute, and most recently Paramount Plus, which is available through TV2Play in Denmark. You can now also subscribe to it separately, but you get a cheaper deal if you subscribe through TV2Play. And um, so what we see here is an interesting kind of idea of a broadcaster becoming a bundle bundler of services themselves, as well as um, an interesting moving away from the um, idea that TV2Play is a service only for Danish content for Danish audiences, which is the core of their the core of their brand. Um, I don't want to spend any words on Hayo and Paramount because, as I promised, I'm looking beyond what the global platforms are doing. So I want to focus on OI because it is a really interesting case. It is a streaming service um, aimed at children between three and twelve. And it has been launched by Nordisk or Nordisk Film, which is part of the Egmont Group, um, uh, who have been active in streaming very early on and who've also had a children's service relatively early on. Um, but with OI, they tried to consolidate these efforts and um, link them as also with their own production businesses. So Egmont uh, not only owns uh, TV channels like TV2 in Norway, they also own production companies. And with OI, they um, created a service that they feed from content that they own as um, distributor, as well as content that they produce themselves. Um, and then they, in the Danish case, uh, place it within TV2. And that is a quite clever strategic move because it gives them access to funding, um, public funding to be precise, because Denmark has a so-called public service fund or public service pool where um, players like TV2 can apply for funding for content, particularly if we're talking about children's content. So this partnership with TV2 Play um, or TV2 allows Nordisk to tap into this fund even more. And as you can see from the quote by um, Christine Winnesko, um, it has been this access to public funding that basically is the entire reason behind this service. So what we see here is a service that is really emerging from within the context of this, um, of the Danish media system, which has this strong public funding. So um, we see a strategy that is exploiting the limitations as well as possibilities of the small media welfare state market that we have in Denmark. Um, and we, uh, what I also find interesting is this presence or this reemergence of channels within the TV2 service um, on the very bottom. You can see how Paramount and OI and Hayu are appearing alongside the local channels. So they're kind of channeling, if you want to say that, the services that they have moving into, into their own platform. Okay, um, but we have to move on to my last example, um, which is um, from the German market. And here um, I'm interested in experiments with new um, with new business models. So the case I'm presenting is called Pantaflix and it comes from a company called Pantaflix um, um, AG. So um, it's a, listed on the stock market and they have a production company. They offer digital services for streaming. So for example, um, digital solutions for turning your film festival into a digital festival, which was very useful during COVID obviously. They have an advertising agency, they do audio production and also a streaming service, which, and here I'm giving away uh, how it has been going, has been in the past the focus of the initiatives. Um, the idea was to have a streaming service 
that would target expats of all different um, from a lot of different countries um, across the world looking for original versions of films from their home countries. So, for example, a German or a French person in America trying to watch the latest movies from Germany or France. And um, the service launched in 2016 with very high ambitions. Um, we aim for one million films relevant to our platforms. One million films. Netflix has a catalog of about 8,000 titles at most. Um, and we aim, we can become a billion dollar business. That's what the CEO said in 2017. And I mean, the idea is very convincing. And what was also convincing was the, was the funding that they proposed. So instead of going the traditional distribution way, what they proposed was a revenue sharing model between producers and the platform. Um, so that they basically effectively cut out the distributors and offer films um, for territories in which there is no traditional distribution. And you can easily see how that could be a huge market. However, um, it hasn't been going very well. The shares have been dropping 80% in the last two years. And um, they have also not been able to realize their plans for local exclusive content in Germany. So um, basically, uh, also the CEO came to the new CEO came to the realization that the monetization of their platform just isn't as easy as previously imagined. Um, and since then, they have turned their focus away from their streaming platform to their digital services as well as to their production. Um, so uh, here we see experiments with a new business model that have failed for, um, and this needs more exploration for many different reasons. But um, this is not to say that it's the revenue sharing model is not one that will continue to challenge Netflix, Amazon and the like, because this model is now also behind other platforms. Um, for example, Pluto TV, which has launched in several European markets recently, um, owned by Viacom, uh, where they apply a revenue sharing model to uh, kind of the back catalog of content producers. So here, um, explanations for the failure are not necessarily with the business model, but with many contextual factors. To sum up, um, I'd like to leave you with a few research perspectives um, that emerge from what I've just told you and encompass the plans for the future work in the project that I intend to do. So I think we see support for the hypothesis that we need to look beyond the US-based globally operating platforms. Um, and because although they dominate the market and often also the debate, um, we need to be attentive to the quite diverging patterns of the uh, European video on demand market. And um, in terms of research, the public service media's development of VOT platforms has been well covered, but we haven't yet been attentive enough to commercial initiatives, um, which um, often feature quite interesting <coughs> business models that can be instructive for understanding how the competition between local and global players has evolved, particularly in these two phases that I've been talking about after the launch of the global services. So what I intend to do in the future is um, double down on my systemic approach, um, uh, looking at the data and trying to cluster the European markets into different types of markets, um, and then um, identifying shared or diverging patterns within their development. Uh, and for this, um, I would also like to take major steps in um, national and European media policy into consideration. And I would like to continue focusing on those case studies that, um, for example, can help us to compare how um, how different strategies play out 
when they're um, when they're used by a European or by a US American player, for example, with the revenue sharing that I was talking about. And in general, I'm a huge fan of failure studies, even though they're difficult to do. So I want to look at more failures and explain them within their different temporal and media systemic contexts. And that was that. Thank you very Thank much. You. Thank you very Thank much, Katrin. Um, can we can be Katrin and Swati. Um, and do you want to stop sharing, Katrin, as well? Um, and yeah. Okay, we can open the the um, space for conversation um, and, and questions. So, um, do we have questions from from the um, from the audience? Sorry. One, one of the things that struck me about both of your papers was um, that, <clears throat> the, the, you know, how how much this is about specific audiences to some extent. You know, Swati, you, you were referring to this at, towards the end of your presentation when you were saying about, you know, how how um, this is about different socioeconomic um, audiences. This is about, um, you know, ordinary people as in, in people who live um, in the slums or in the um, in the rural areas versus um, maybe the more urban, uh, better off. Uh, people um, and I wonder if if there's evidence of um, of different use as well with the things like um, oh god was it Panda Panda um, you know the, the the German one that you you were mentioning um, so do do we know anything about who is actually using them and is it is it for those um, expats as as they were talking about you know they were they were thinking um, expats will use them but I'm an expat. You are an expat, um, and the thing that really struck me is that I've never come across it. I've never seen it, um, and I know that there's German stuff on um, all four. There's German stuff on Netflix. There's German stuff on Amazon. So why would I need to go somewhere else, in a way? So um, the, the the issue for me to some extent is having a German um, company that that has absolutely you know, it hasn't even tried to reach me yet in any way, uh, which is interesting. So so um, how much is this about um, specific audiences and their specific take up of, of these um, services that shapes on the one hand the narratives and genre and on the other hand, actually the success or failure of um, those um, streaming services? Yes, uh, I'm absolutely uh, agree with what you are saying. And that is also a reality of market. And that is why uh, there are different, you can say, pockets of audiences to which uh, uh, different players which are coming in the market, they are trying to catch. So now, as I said earlier, that India is, uh, you can say, we have a very big population and uh, the society is very diverse. So now, uh, uh, Earlier, before you can say privatization, only Doordarshan was there. And normally, when we talk about Doordarshan, which is a public broadcasting service of India, so they normally follow the guidelines given by the government. So that time, again, uh, people used to say, uh, specifically the media people and the journalists, they used to say that uh, Doordarshan or the public broadcasting service of India is an idiot box or it is a mouthpiece of the government. And that is why we need a privatization. So uh, during 1995, because of privatization, private media as well as the foreign media entered into the Indian market and they experimented a lot but whatever they have experimented that time with the content uh, they tried to uh, capture uh, was on uh, housewives the, the women who lives in the 
in the homes so uh, when it comes to entertainment they, uh, they 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 captured only that particular segment or sections of the audiences and uh, uh, and, uh, and and and, and the, the pattern which was set by that time during 1995 2000 uh, if you can see the 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 uh, the, the content which televisions uh, channels specifically for the entertainment purpose are creating it's remaining same they are not changing it at all what we were seeing, seeing during 1995 2000 we are seeing the same kind of content till today even today so uh, uh, they uh, they they are making different seasons like nagin serial as i said it is based on the story of snakes so they have a season 1 2 3 4 5 and this is the sixth season which they have produced and the producer is ekta kapoor she is a lady uh, you can say uh, producer and uh, normally people also say that she is a queen of indian television sector so uh, she has introduced this particular uh, uh, concept of the uh, in the in, uh, television inter entertainment sector of india what kind of uh, families are there in indian society so what are the stories of joint families what are the stories of uh, neutral families so that is a main uh, concept of her uh, her serials and other you can say television producers they are also copying the same because this particular concept or this particular you can say pattern is accepted by the audiences they Joint families and specifically in the in the uh, in the women who lives in the family. Uh, so uh, this is accepted. Uh, but now we are seeing some change uh, in the storytelling, specifically when we talk about the OTT platforms. And during lockdown, we have seen that a lot of people they shifted from television watching towards the OTT uh, platform uh, or the online streaming watching, and they are getting new content over there. They are getting content uh, to which they can relate because if you can see because of the economic development which we are seeing in India, a lot of new, you can say, uh, complexities are emerging in the society, not only in the poor section, but also in the middle and the rich section also. So uh, these are the new changes which the, which the society itself is facing. So uh, when, OTT, when we talk about OTT platforms or online streaming platforms, so they are uh, capturing these new things which are happening in the society. And they are also capturing uh, new things which audiences wants to see. They don't want to see uh, the 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 same old pattern you know, followed by the by the uh, by the uh, television producers. Uh, if you can see uh, uh, in the Indian uh, about uh, if you can see about Indian uh, if you can talk about the Indian audiences, there are audiences who are watching uh, web series produced in Korea, web web series produced by Taiwan. So though they are in foreign languages, but still they watch it because translations are available over there, so they can read it. And they are watching all these content because they are getting new stories. They are getting very interesting uh, subjects. They are getting new topics uh, in these in these web series. So uh, uh, audiences are very diverse, and they also want to experiment. They they want since the the content is available, so they want to watch it. And most of the content is available free of cost. So that is also one you can say plus point when they are uh, shifting towards the OTT platforms and. Uh, Normally, they watch all these OTT uh, online streaming platforms on their mobile phone. Mobile internet uh, percentage is very high in India, access or uh, uses of mobile internet. So they are watching it alone. So when they are OTT or online streaming platforms, they are watching content alone. They are not watching with the family. So they have a freedom to choose a content which they want to see. The selection freedom is available over there. And, uh, and I totally agree with you. If the content is available and uh, the topics which are not touched by a television serial because they don't want to the because they have a fear that probably they will see uh, some ex, some you can say exceptional stories or stories which are not uh, accepted uh, by the indian society they, they are not they are not ready to believe that such kind of things are happening in the society such kind such kind of changes are happening in the society and uh, and uh, and uh, because of that the watching habits or the watching you can say consumption habits or consumption uh, you can say uh, entertainment needs are also changing of the audiences so this is the fear of uh, television producers but this opportunity is captured by the ott uh, uh, platforms and they 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 are they are uh, they are growing they are developing 
they, they are getting audiences and they are also getting advertisers and they are uh, earning revenue and that is a good thing that at least uh, we have an option available that uh, audiences can watch different kind of stories uh, of different people, different countries and the different people who are existing in our own society, in our, our own country. The stories which we have never learned, which we have never uh, watched before. So these platforms are giving us opportunity to see the changes in society itself. Yes. That's really interesting. Thank you very much, Sasi. So, so I think that like connects to um, actually precisely the, the idea that um, maybe you know in India there is the need to um, to address unmet needs. But are these needs unmet for you know, for example, the the German diaspora in America, in the UK, and wherever we are, basically, um, as Panda Flix wanted to. Yeah, that, that's a very interesting point. I think um, <clears throat> timing is a key issue here because um, Pantaflix launched in 2016, which, uh, as you all well know, is the year in which Netflix had completed its global expansion. Um, and uh, so um, Netflix, as well as Amazon, have become the go-to platforms by that point, and you do get access to at least some um, local content. Um, uh, and there's also many transactional video on demand platforms, uh, for example, um, on through Amazon or Google Play, where you can buy access to specific films. Um, and uh, I would hypothesize that this has led to a downward spiral for this model, because the revenue sharing idea would actually be quite attractive to producers, particularly of indie film, um, because they they can um, uh, yeah uh, they can cut out the middleman who wouldn't give them much money anyway, and they can profit from the success of the platform. But because the platform wasn't successful, um, there is no that there is no attractiveness of this model anymore, and that also means that they didn't get any attractive content. So. It, it, this this way it it just couldn't they just couldn't make it in that sense and in what is interesting is that they are also benefiting from their own failure because um, the company at uh, the production company is actually one that is supplying for example Amazon Prime with German speaking originals for the German market so in I mean it's a clever business strategy obviously because you are in different in different sections of the value chain, um, but they're kind of working against their own model here. So um, that would be my answer to that. And I really like the idea of different audiences. And some of these audiences may also be imagined audiences in the sense that you think that that uh, that access to the latest French film is something that a French person living in the US might want. But maybe they don't. That's a really good point. Um, sorry. Um, we have uh, we actually have uh, in Liverpool because there's so many Germans living in Liverpool. I don't know why, but it's just what it is. Um, basically, we have a film night in Liverpool um, for, for Germans and they just get the DVDs out, so DVD remains a really useful um, medium, surprisingly, in this context. Um, Robert, you've got a question. Hi, uh, thank you both. Yeah. Uh, really interesting presentations. Um, I'm really interested in this idea of the broadcaster as bundler that Katrin talked about as a kind of response to uh, an overwhelming array of choices um, in the market. And obviously, it, it feels like it's the way certain things are going. You see it in the UK with you know Apple and Amazon kind of doing that as a response to too many SVODs. Um, but it seems to be happening. I thought that was really interesting that it was happening in in um, Denmark within a public service broadcaster context with TV2, uh, as I understand it, um, and clearly not happening in India, where there seems to be much uh, from, from what Swati says. So there's a much bigger distinction between these different types of traditional and, and emerging audiences and maybe issues of regulation, I don't know, um, involved. So 
it, it seems like an interesting trend. Um, but I wondered with it struck me that the with with TV two as a public service broadcaster, it makes a lot of sense what you say about the children's content because that can draw on the public service discourse uh, as, as sort of a valuable public service media. And then you have things like Hey You and Paramount Plus. And I wondered how those much more commercially coded um, forms of content, how TV2 managed to promote that within a public service context. Like how was that treated within the discourse of a public service broadcaster bundling all this kind of commercial content? Um, so, so how is it justified within the public service context? bringing that commercial content into a PSB bundle, but also um, is it happening in other public service contexts? Have you seen this kind of bundling happening um, within different nations that have a strong public service broadcaster, if that makes sense? So there's two questions there. Um, thank you. Yeah, that's a that's a good point. And maybe I haven't stressed the public service point enough. Um, TV2 Play is a commercial public service broadcaster, so compared to, to ITV. However, TV2 Play isn't technically public service, so the remit is only to TV2 as the main channel. Having said that, TV2 as a company is very much doubling down on the identity of being a public service broadcaster, supplying Danes with Danish speaking content, and this perfectly fits with the children, um, but not with the rest. So what I'm, um, uh, what they are, the, the, I think one of the reasons why they are doing this bundling is that it becomes also easier to dissociate from that content. So if you think about the strategy of Netflix, um, their strategy for going drilling deeper into the market was producing their own reality shows, their own baking shows, their own very unlovingly made cooking shows which I'm speaking for myself here, uh, which we hate <laughs> because they're just not good quality. Um, but what TV2 is doing here is still like attaching a different label to it so that it's not theirs, that it becomes easier to differentiate between the TV2 identities and the identity of being more of a platform like a cable provider that is offering you access to a specific channel. Um, so, uh, but this doesn't mean that there cannot, that there isn't any conflict or that this strategy might not be the one that is getting them the 1.3 million subscribers that they're aiming for. Um, in terms of seeing this in other markets, um, I haven't seen it as much within a broadcaster's service, but it's certainly what is happening with cable providers, um, like offering you cheaper subscriptions to Netflix, Amazon and whatever. Um, and also as a strategy for new services to launch, for example, Paramount Plus will launch as part of um, Sky in Germany. So it's also a strategy of the American commercial players to look for these local platforms from which they can um, from which they can launch in order to then become viable themselves. Thanks. Very interesting. Thank you. Any further questions? Um, if not, can we um, thank Swati and uh, Katrin again, and I've also put into uh, the chat um, the details of the next session. Um, but yeah, thank you very much. Um, these were really interesting papers in terms of really recognising the complexity of um, what is going on in terms of, you know, how traditional television and um, OTT are kind of negotiating the current climate. Um, so thank you very, very much for these. Um, and um, all of you, thank you for attending and asking your questions. And we will see you at two o'clock. Thank you.